All right. Hey, everyone. Uh, I had somebody on LinkedIn reach out. They shared their campaigns with me and they wanted me to review uh, their cold email campaigns. So we're going to do a quick breakdown. Uh, it looks to me like the offers here are to get more leads for dentist office and insurance agents. So we are going to jump into this. Um, the, so the very first thing that I'm going to say, uh, right off the rip here for all of you people doing cold email, uh, I see the total in the screenshot here, 286, this is too low. Um, so total sent being 286 and we confirm that that's how many leads they're sending to step one. Um, I don't even test a campaign on less than a thousand contacts because unless it's a thousand contacts, I, I wouldn't even, I can't even tell if the campaign is working. Um, 286 is just not enough contact. So the first thing I would tell this person is that they need to um, send more emails. And so now we have email one, hi, first name. All right, let's zoom in for everybody. Hi, first name. Hey, first name, love what you're doing at Company Name. Glad I came across you all. Pumped to hopefully connect. The reason I wanted to reach out is that we specialize in helping dentists, dental offices becoming the most trusted dentists in their area and learn more patients on the website. We do this with our redacted and get, oh, I, I redacted this with our, their like system and guarantee that you'll see 10 new clients in your first 30 days or we'll work for free until you do. Up for a convo. Okay, so let's start from the top. One, this subject line, uh, I am not a huge fan of these subject lines. The only people who send subject lines like this are people who are marketers. And then you also always have to think about how this email looks in the preview text of the, the you know, mail app when they get the push notification. And so now you're going to say, you know, hi, Eric, and then, hey, Eric, and it just looks a little bit odd. So my rule with subject lines, and I, I've held to this for so long that I, you know, I'm very open to being wrong, but uh, it just keeps coming back to this. My rule for subject lines is I want to send something that it's possible that a customer has sent them that email or a colleague has sent them that email. So a story that I always tell people is we were working with a company that uh, they help uh, like pizza shops, they help them redo their SEO and their websites and, you know, essentially get more orders through. So the subject that we put on that email was pizza orders and we had a 92% open rate. Partially, I know because open rates are fake and you can't account for them, but that still being said, we had a 92% open rate and it's because in the email, now it wasn't a bait and switch. That's the most important part. It can't be a bait and switch. But in the email, we were saying, you know, like subject line pizza orders. And, you know, then we would talk about how we could help them get more pizza orders. And so, you know, that, that that's kind of my rule with subject lines. So with here, I, I would probably have to do a little bit more thinking than kind of just this breakdown that I'm doing now. But something for dental office is... Um, You know, I don't know how much access this person has to data, but one thing that I like doing when I reach out to local businesses is uh, doing something with like their address, their Google reviews, or their Yelp reviews. And so uh, I, like a good subject line I like is, you know, saw your office on street name or saw your Yelp reviews or saw your... 4.6 Google star rating, th things like that. To, that it it kind of looks like a customer would send that. Um, but again, you can never do a bait and switch. Never, never, never do a bait and switch. Never say, I would like to buy from you and then get into the pitch and then you're obviously not buying from them. So I know yeah, I just spoke for kind of a long time on subject lines, but those that's how I would fix those probably. Um, hey, first name and you know, nothing wrong with that. Love what you're doing at company name. Glad I came across you all. Pumped to hopefully connect. So I don't love these openers. And the big reason I don't love these openers is because, yeah, you have the personalization of their company name, but it's really not that novel to say that. And you could say this to any company. And now with the sophistication of buyers and, and they kind of know what's up with email marketing, this is the level like negative two of an opening line. Um, where, you know, you're not proving that you came across them. You, you're not proving that you love what you're doing. 
and you're just saying pumps to hopefully connect. Like it's not, you know, you're showing no proof here. And so what I would change this line to, even if you don't have access to like all of the AI tools and clay and crazy things that we have, I would change this to something like I was looking for dental offices uh, in Sarasota, Florida or whatever, wherever they're located and your Google rating stood out to me, you know, your, and then I would insert the Google rating so that it would pop up. Or, you know, I was taking a look at your company and the review that somebody left about, you know, the, you know, how great of Sarah's work gets done. Now you'd need AI for that one. So I apologize for saying that. Never mind. Um, but I would open up with some true facts about them. Like just, and even anything, like even like one thing that we use um, for private equity, like uh, we help private equity companies pretty often find leads. One line that we even use is just, uh, hey, not sure if it would be better to call you at phone number, but I figured email would be easier. And so then we're inserting their phone number so it looks really personalized. So their phone, like it would just be right here. So even bottom of the barrel stuff, like I would just be like, not sure if it'd be easier to call you at phone number, but I figured email would be easier and then like get into it. So, but I would also like, I really lean into how you found them though. Um, John Barrows taught me about this why you, why now framework. And so use that first line to amplify the why you in this, and then you can get into it. So why you, I was looking for dental offices in Sarasota, Florida, and I saw your 4.6 star rating. Um, if you want to add more personalization, you know, layer these things. I'm not sure if calling you at number would work, uh, would be easier but I figured I'd start with an email. I was looking for dental offices in Sarasota, Florida, blah, blah, blah. All right, anyway, the reason I wanted to reach out is that we specialize in helping dental offices become the most trusted dentist in the area and land more patients. We do this all with our guarantee, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so here's the thing that I have the biggest thing against this. Um, and I'm gonna zoom out so we, we can see everything. What I, what I don't like about these things is you have now said the exact same thing that every person who has ever emailed them about lead generation has said to them. I know, like one, honestly, there's nothing, you know, insightful about this line. And I know this looks like an amazing offer, but all they're seeing is the exact same thing that everybody else is pitching them. And so I'm, I'm going to relate this a little bit to my industry and my business so that we can, you know, hit the point home. So I, I very much understand that I am in a dime a dozen industry. If a company wanted to work with Growth Engine X, they, and then they wanted to evaluate, you know, other companies to work with, there's phenomenal agencies out there for people to work with. You could work with uh, Cold IQ, you could work with Jordan Crawford's company, you could work with uh, Jacob Turnwinner's company, you could work with Leadbird, you could work with Belkins, you could work with Science, like Predictable Revenue. There's so many different companies that you could work with, right? And so all of us could say this as well and so hey we've got the system where we could get you leads and we'll you know keep working until we get you a certain amount of leads or something all of us can say that i think what most performance based lead generation companies get wrong is they're getting hung up on putting out the most phenomenal offer that they possibly can but in doing so you're now giving the same offer that everybody gives as well and so what I would rather use this space to do is to teach them about, you know, what is your opinion and what is your insight and what is your methodology on how you can get them leads that truly can lower the cost for them to, act, to acquire customers. So again, back in my business, when, when I send prospecting emails for Growth Engine X, what we're doing is we're using AI to analyze one, who do they sell to? Why do they sell to those people? Who would be good targets? And then we're, you know, doing a bunch of Google scraping for it. Um, and then we're using AI to infer what kind of outbound campaigns they would be running so that I can send an email where I can say, Hey, you know, I, uh, was taking a look at your website. Looks like you sell to VPs of sales and, um, sales development leaders, whatever it might be. Uh, I had to guess that you're probably using outbound marketing considering SDR name, and then we put the SDR's name in the email, uh, considering SDR name. Uh, so considering John is an SDR on your team, I have to imagine they're doing things like, and then we AI generate an outbound campaign that they're probably putting together. 
you know, I went ahead and I used our system to automatically find a couple of prospects for you. Uh, here's three leads that I think could possibly be a good fit. And then we drop the three leads. We give the LinkedIn profile. We give the email address. We give the mobile number. And then I end it all with, uh, if three leads isn't enough for you, would you want to talk about how we can build an automated system to find these leads and reach out to all of your customers? Signature. P.S. By the way, this whole email was created with AI. We could do the same thing for you. Would you be interested? Now, I'm not saying that's a perfect email, but I, I am thrusting all of our methodology and all of the cool, capable things that we are able to do in our cold outreach campaigns into our campaigns. So one, they're seeing AI about who their customer ICP is. Two, they're seeing that we're able to pull the employees in their company We'll pull their names and put them into the email copy. Three, we're able to automatically create AI generated ideas about what they're probably doing for outbound. Four, I'm able to automatically pull three leads, pull mobile numbers, and just give it away for free to them. And then we're giving a pitch, right? And so I'm just like, my product is how well I can send a cold email, right? And so I am just dumping on them as great of a cold email stuffed with as many custom variables as I possibly can, because that's what we do for our customers as well. And so I say all of this because if you're running a performance lead generation company or whatever it might be, and you have these kinds of guarantees, you have a methodology, you have an insight, you have an opinion on how to get these leads. I think it is far more interesting to share with people in this email how you can do it and how you can help them. And free, even if you teach them, if you go as far to teach them everything that you know so that they could implement it themselves, that's fine because nobody's really going to implement them themselves, right? Like you're still going to, they're still going to be intrigued. They're not going to want to wake up and do whatever Facebook thing that, that you're doing to get these leads and things like that. So again, I just want to tighten this up by basically saying, yes, this is quote unquote an irresistible offer because you're saying that you'll get at least 10 new clients in your first 30 days or will work for free until you do, which is a whole other thing to talk about right now because, um, the other thing here is now you're saying, or we'll work for free until you do. So in their mind, they're like, okay, if I give you $5,000 and I don't get 10 new leads, how long is it going to take me to get my $5,000 back? So I, I don't totally love the, or we'll work for free until you do uh, type things as well. But anyway, I would much rather use this, this space to build in a different kind of irresistible offer. So uh, another irresistible offer is just, showing them and teaching them how to to run the system themselves. And even you could put the whole thing in the email, just like tell them this is how it works. When I did my webinar with Alex Hermosi, uh, the copywriting that I asked him to roast was literally us. I wrote a campaign for Gym Launch and I, the whole call to action was we have a guide that gets you X amount of revenue per month and it just helped another gym owner do it. Would you want to see it? We weren't pitching, you know, we guarantee that we're going to close this much. Otherwise you don't pay and blah, blah, blah. Like we were pitching authority. We weren't pitching, you know, this like quote unquote irresistible offer. So again, insights, share what you know about the market and, and your specific twist on that. I know I'm spending a lot of time on it. Okay. Email two. wondering if you had a chance to take a look at my last email and not a lot. I know a lot of dentists, uh, oh, whoops, sorry, redacted. Hopefully, yeah, whatever. Maybe you could rewind. Okay. I know a lot of dentists struggle to scale trust, get patients. That's why we started, the, which helps dental offices just like yours become the known and trusted in your really think this. Okay. Again, so in this email, you've essentially said nothing that your competitors can't say, right? So there's, there's two things in this email. Again, we have another opportunity to share insights. So in this, in this email, I would share what is different about your system and why are you so confident that it's going to work? In this email, I would share a specific story of how you helped a customer and walk through the story so that they can visualize what it would look like in their, their comp company. So again, all I'd like always be thinking about what, how can I make this worth this person's time to respond? But also what can I say in this email that my competitors can't say? And at this point you've said nothing that your competitors can't say. So that that's another thing that I would. I would throw on here. And so what your competitors can't say is they can't tell a story. So whatever you talk about with your, your insightful uh, methodology up here, I would tell a story of how it worked for a customer down here to make it really real and have it hit home. 
Um, okay, so the other thing that I don't like about this email is wondering if you had a chance to check out my last email, which leads into uh, another part with this. I highly check. I, I highly recommend everyone checks out Oren Claff's uh, work, uh, specifically in pitch anything and flip the script. And I think more more so flip the script. So Oren Claff has this uh, mm, teaching, you might say. Um, or a lesson uh, that he calls status alignment. And so oftentimes when we are trying to sell something, we are very bad at our keeping our status alignment, right? So if you are the CEO of a $5 billion company and well, if you are trying to sell to the CEO of a $5 billion company, and then you are just an SDR at a startup. Now, you've got like this crazy big status alignment. If all you're doing is you have commission breath, you're not sharing any value and you're just begging for this person's time, right? They're all the way up here and you're all the way down here and you're just trying to close this gap and you're never going to be able to close that gap. And so in status alignment, we, what we want to do is now this person might be a CEO of a $5 billion company, but they don't know as much as you know about Facebook ads, TikTok organic marketing, LinkedIn organic marketing, LinkedIn ads, cold email, you know, all of these things. So what we can do is we can align our status by bringing them into a realm where you know more things about them, uh, about a topic than, than they do. So, you know, they could be, uh, and this is probably why some personal trainers you know, have some ego trips because, and they never leave the gym is because you could be a $5 billion CEO and go into the gym and this personal trainer can squat twice as much as you can. That CEO looks at this personal trainer who could squat twice as much as he can. And in the gym realm, he has a higher status. And I'm like, like, that's why I kind of joke about personal trainers who never leave. Cause maybe that's why, cause they, they've got such high status in the gym that they, they never get out of it. And so what we need to do is we need to bring these people, you know, into our world and show them how much more we know in our world than they do. And hopefully we can teach them and, and help them from those things. So saying things like wondering if you had a chance to check out my last email, or I hope you're not avoiding me, like patients avoid that cleaning appointment they scheduled six months ago. Those things just to lower your status, you, you automatically, whatever value you're, you're uh, bringing, whatever insights you have, however much you know more about this process than they do, you're losing it because now you're just begging for attention. Again, you are the expert in whatever the system is. You are an expert in customer acquisition for dentists. They are a dentist. They know how to clean teeth. They have no clue how to acquire customers. You need to come off as the number one expert at acquiring customers for dentists. And so these things just take away from that. So again, I would tell a story in here. So about specifically how you would help uh, these, these dental offices wanted to circle back about helping you scale trust using our system. Just a reminder, if you don't see the results, okay, we work for free. Yeah. So now that's just making me feel like that's just $5,000. So here's another thing that I want to bring up too. So the big reason my agency doesn't have guarantees and this person has a guarantee, right? My agency does not have a guarantee because I am not naive enough to walk into a campaign that I have never run before and tell the people that we guarantee that it's going to work. I don't know. It, it all comes down to your offer. I have no clue if it's going to work. And so if you are a private equity company and you're looking for pest control businesses that want to sell, I already have those leads. I can guarantee that I'm going to find those leads for you. Hell, I, like I, I would slap, like I'll pay you $10,000 if I can't get you pest control leads. I, I know that we can get pest control leads uh, of, you know, pest control companies who want to sell their business. I know for a fact we can do that. I'll pay you if I don't get that, right? And so with these offers, if you are so sure that you can get these leads, why don't you just go out and get the leads and then just give them the leads in the email? So now we skip all of this, you know, oh, maybe they'd be able to do it. And now I have to convince this person. Target dental offices in Tampa, Florida, and I don't know what you do to get these dental leads, get the dental leads, and then go to all of the dentists in Tampa, Florida and say, hey, here's a spreadsheet with 25 leads. I generated them yesterday. Or maybe you could create a little bit of intrigue. Uh, just, just so that you know that people would make it, just so that you know it would be worth it. Another way I would think about doing this is I would reach out to these people and I would say, 
hey, we are about to uh, test running some, you know, marketing or we're about to test our dental lead getter system in Tampa, Florida. I'm about to turn on the system. I just wanted to do a quick spot check. If I were able to generate some leads from this system, uh, would I be able to just pass them on to you, uh, you know, for free to start? And just to generate some intrigue, right? To just get some people like, what the heck, what is this guy doing? And just send them that email. And I would even say, just wait, you know, until next week and I'll, I'll send you the spreadsheet. Maybe you do that. Maybe you don't. I don't know. We'll take it from there. I'm spitballing. It's 1130 at night. So what I would definitely do though, is if I've already generated the leads, I would just walk up to all the dentists, have the spreadsheet and just say, look, uh, I ran our dental customer getter campaign uh, in Tampa, Florida, and I generated these leads. Have a look at them. Uh, they are ready to go and you could use these for free right now. Just take them. I, you know, you could absolutely have these leads. There's 25 on the list. If 25 leads isn't enough for you, would you want to have a conversation about how we could get you more on a monthly basis? Again, not everything has to be this like, oh, you know, if we don't get you results, we'll work for free for 30 days. No, 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 no. Like if you can do it, go do it. And then you, whatever money you have to invest, you will make it up by people paying for your service because you've already proven it to them that it works. So anyway, that's another way that you could be pitching these kinds of services. Uh, last shot, my email here again. Yeah, again, this is just like a breakup email. I uh, see. So it, by email four, I wouldn't even talk to these dentists anymore. I would keep this to a three email sequence. The big, we have a lot of data in my agency that emails one and two get most of your positive responses. It's like email three and four are marginally worth sending. And uh, specifically because this person is talking to every dentist office in America and every insurance agent, they have plenty of leads to work with. I would just keep working through the list until you keep getting there. So the framework that I would, if, if I were to just change this campaign a little bit, I, what I think this person should really do is just generate the leads and then just give the leads away for free and just prove to these people that the leads work and then book calls with the people after the fact. If I were to change this campaign though with, with how it is stylistically right now, again, email one, give your insight about how your system works and, and you know, how it's different than your competitors. Email two, tell a story about how it worked for another dentist and, you know, their experience with it and, and all those kinds of things. Email three, either I would share another insight or I would go for something even more valuable. So one thing that I'm a really big fan of is um, pitching and saying, hey, you know, I'm so confident that this is going to work. Uh, if I were to make you a custom video going over how we would set up the system in your area, would that be useful to you? And the reason I, I pitch it that way is because I don't like getting emails where people are saying, Hey, I made you a video. Do you want to watch it? And it's like, no, you didn't make me a video. You're just trying to get me to respond. So that's why I always frame it as, Hey, if I were to do this custom thing for you, would you actually take the time to watch it? So that one, they know that the resource that they're getting is going to be custom and two, whoops. Uh, and two, they also know they know it's going to be custom and also that you're not leaving them with that icky feeling of like, no, you didn't, you know, you didn't make that video. It, it didn't happen. You know, that kind of things. And so I use that for email three because we want to try to get as many responses as we can on email one. Cause like I said, you're going to get most of your positive responses on email one. Um, email two, you want to just dig deeper into that. And then email three, like there is friction for somebody to respond. They're thinking to themselves, okay, if I say yes to this, I'm going to go through a sales cycle and that's their friction, right? And so what you want to do in email three is you want to lower the amount of friction um, that there is for them to respond and increase the amount of value that they're going to get. So a free custom video is a good way to do that. One way that we do this in our campaigns is like as we get deeper into the, the sequence, I start pitching crazy stuff. Like in email two of my campaigns, I start using AI to figure out the kinds of customers that they want to target. And then I say, hey, would it be useful if we were to hop on a call and uh, I'll build you as long as your your list permits, I'll give you 5,000 free leads. If we hop on a call and you want to just perfect the, the list, I'll, I'll send them all to you, um, you know, after the call. And then in the PS section, I do cheeky stuff. Like uh, I'll say, you know, if this email totally missed the mark for you, I want to provide value for, for you anyway. 
just respond with unicorn and I'll give you, you know, every like uh, company in SaaS that raised money in the last six months, right? So that way, like, you got to show a little bit of personality in your emails, guys. Like, there's there's no personality uh, in these emails. Again, I guess big things, and then I'm going to wrap up the video. Big things is share your insights. You have a process that works. Share how it works and just give away the farm because it, it, they're not just going to wake up and they're going to become a Facebook ads expert. Like, they're going to hire you to do these things. Two, what can you say in an email that your competitors can't say? Three, status alignment. Always freaking remember that you are the expert in this. Don't be begging people for calls. You're, you're an expert. An ex like, you know, Taylor Swift isn't out there cold calling pe people to go to her concert, you know? And, and so you really got to like work on that, you know, status alignment there. So for the person who sent me this, uh, these campaigns, hope this was useful to you. I've said the frameworks before. I can jump in and help you a little bit more. Um, I hope this was useful for everybody else watching as well. If you disagree with anything I said, I'm probably going to agree with you. I, I take feedback and, and I, uh, I know that I am not the number one expert in the world on these things. These are just my opinions. And uh, I hope this was useful. So we'll take it from there.